webinar uh, we have started uh, since the COVID in Pakistan. And this was only to create the awareness to, uh, to the common man, to the students, and to our consultants, and to the doctors. Uh, Pakistan Medical Association, uh, with collaboration of uh, PAC, Pakistan Association of Pathologists, and with collaboration of uh, Women uh, Medical uh, College, Aftabad, and with the collaboration of uh, Azad Jammu Kashmir Medical College, Muzaffarabad. And uh, every week we invite uh, the legend people uh, related to the uh, different specialties, different fields who have some opinions about the uh, COVID. And so Dr. Palitha Mahipala, uh, introduction, uh, 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 the, Pakistan, the whole the Pakistan knows about him. And uh, uh, Palitha Mahipala has uh, uh, facilitated, we are very thankful to you, you facilitated the vaccine uh, to Pakistan, sir. And uh, due to your uh, cooperation, now the government of Pakistan is able to give, I think, more than 69% of the people's uh, uh, complete dose. So before this, you uh, start the, uh, today's presentation, I will request uh, Professor Kazi, uh, Dr. Kazi Saab, he is the elect president, to could give if just brief today's uh, uh, situation of the vaccine in the Pakistan. Thank you, Dr. Professor Mulazim. And uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Palita, for joining us at this forum of Pakistan Medical Association on this 29th PMA webinar. The current situation as it stands today is uh, right before you uh, on the screen. Uh, the vaccine stats is uh, we have partially vaccinated 124 million of population. The fully vaccinated is 96 million, while we were able to have 4 million uh, booster doses. So total doses of 209 million people. And uh, in the last 24 hours, 922,000 uh, uh, people were vaccinated. And uh, the confirmed cases uh, in the last uh, 24 hours are 847. And uh, the critical care cases in the last 24 hours were zero. While the deaths, we, we, I mean, throughout this COVID, we had the total deaths of 30,173. While in the last 24 hours, we had 20 deaths. And the recovered cases, they are doing fine. And I think our positivity rate today stands less than 3%, which is 2.7% overall. Less than 3 So with this situation, please carry on. We would like to hear Dr. Polita. Thank you, thank you, thank you Dr. Kazi. Thank you, Dr. Kazi. Uh, before uh, I request uh, Dr. Mahi Pala to start the uh, presentation, our next uh, um, panelist is also Major General uh, uh, American. I'm very thankful to sir. Uh, you gave, I, I know you both peoples are very busy and remained busy during this vaccination program. Now, uh, Dr. Uh, Palitha Mahi Pala, uh, it is over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Th thank you so much. It's great honor for me to join you today. Uh, for this uh, webinar. Thank you for inviting me to join you. Um, uh, let me give a brief uh, uh, presentation on the global regional and, and then country situation. Um, can we share our screen? I, I, I will present some data uh, which, uh, uh, which is by 25th of February and also some data which I get globally today. Um, now, if you look at the global situation, um, and now, now uh, by 25th of February, 430 million cases reported across the globe with 5.9 million deaths. Um, and if you uh, look at uh, global average per 1 million population, it's something around 60,000 cases. Uh, and, and deaths are 731. And if you start to compare that with the Pakistan figure, Pakistan, if you look at number of cases for 1 million population, it, it comes to 
just above 6,000 cases. Again, if you look at the deaths globally, it's 731 deaths per 1 million population, where it's uh, close to 200 in Pakistan. So these are just a comparison, not individual countries, but with uh, the global average. And by now, it's uh, 10.4 billion doses given uh, across the globe. But uh, majority, 70 to 75 percent uh, of these vaccine doses in few countries, 10 to 15 countries. So there, there's huge vaccine iniquity. And among uh, the 194 member states uh, uh, globally, um, I think close to um, 63 member states who have not reached 40% uh, of uh, full immunization. So that, that shows the iniquity. And if you look at, again, the global average, uh, for one uh, uh, million, uh, or one person, if you look at, uh, it is 1.29 doses is the global average, and Pakistan is uh, 0.94. Now, there are uh, WHO six regions, uh, Europe, region is reporting the highest number. Now, earlier it was first three waves. It was uh, the Americas, but now it's Europe because, you know, Europe has been hit very hard uh, due to Omicron. So then Americas, 146 million, Southeast Asia, 55 million, Western Pacific, 22 million, and Embro region, where we are belongs to, uh, 21 million cases have been reported. And you can see first, second, third wave globally, and comparing with the fourth wave, it is five, five times high number of cases reported during the fifth wave. So it's uh, mainly due to Omicron and globally now more than 95% of the cases reported are due to Omicron. Uh, th this is a global picture. Now, fortunately, the last two, three weeks, uh, number of cases reporting start to come down globally. Uh, and all, almost all the regions, it's coming down except the Western Pacific region. Uh, and region we are belongs to, Eastern Mediterranean region, uh, it, it start to come down dramatically now. Uh, th this just show uh, the genomic sequencing capacity in different countries. You, you can see out of 22 countries in our region, 15 countries have the capacity of reporting and Pakistan is one. And it was said Pakistan is the best among uh, all the other Indo countries when it comes to reporting on genomic sequencing. So that, that much of capacity we have. And uh, I don't want to go into all these details. Uh, let, let me see uh, the final summary about the embryo countries. Now we see dramatic decrease in reported cases. Uh, reported death trends also started to decline now. More than 50% uh, of weekly cases are from Iran and Jordan and other countries it is now mainly coming down. Now, uh, if you look at the global situation, you know, uh, Omicron BA2 uh, variant uh, is a little bit more risky compared to the other, but uh, it's not much reported in many countries, mainly uh, less severe cases are being reported uh, when it comes to Omicron. So this is the comparison of the vaccination of, uh, across the embryo countries. We have 22 countries. We can see Pakistan. Now, uh, when it comes to fully vaccination, it, it crosses 40%. Now it is 43% and, and partially vaccination. This is for total population, not the targeted population. And you can see there are some countries which much more, but there are many countries below. We are, we are in the middle in the region. Uh, highest number of cases per thousand population, if you compare again in the region, Pakistan it is, is very much low. Um, so you, you can't go and compare the total population, uh, total cases reported, but you really need to go by uh, either for one million population or thousand population number of cases and deaths. So if you do that, Pakistan is one of the lowest number of cases and deaths reported uh, uh, in the Indo region as well as globally. Uh, uh, just to highlight the measures imposed, uh, you, you can compare with other countries. Pakistan is one of the countries has imposed uh, many measures throughout, uh, but now we much relax uh, because cases are coming down. Again, how long it took to uh, uh, you know, lift the uh, measures? 
especially the gatherings. Pakistan have, has kept it uh, for a long time. Um, again, uh, if you compare um, schools, uh, how Pakistan is uh, working on that, I, I, I think uh, school, uh, again, uh, the measures have been kept for a long time. Th those were the reasons why Pakistan was able to um, come out with this uh, pandemic situation very comprehensively and uh, remarkable way. Now, this uh, just uh, now it has been presented. So if you go by uh, uh, total number of vaccination done is 210 million, 209.4 million. Uh, if you look at the target population, um, uh, you know, fully vaccination comes around um, uh, around 60% uh, now, partially vaccination comes close to 80% among the target population. But the global indicator is from the total population because Pakistan has a huge um, under 12 population. And if you look at uh, the total immunization or total vaccination comes down to 43% now. But it's an amazing vaccine drive in Pakistan. Uh, last few weeks, it's 2 million uh, vaccination doses were administered every day. So that's the vaccine drive in Pakistan. So it's, I, I would say it's really super fast. Now, if you look at the total number of cases uh, is coming down, Pakistan is observing the fifth wave, though globally it is fourth wave, and fifth wave is suddenly went up to 8,500 within two to three weeks. Uh, that was the highest number reported since ever the pandemic was started and now has come down. Now it is less than 1,500 cases a day. So that's very much low and deaths also is, uh, is very low. Now, this is how uh, uh, by Friday cases were reported. Uh, uh, it's still seen this reporting high number, Punjab and KP are two other districts reporting uh, high number of cases. So number of deaths again, Sindh and Punjab are, uh, and KP reporting the mostly uh, number of deaths. So altogether 30,139 uh, deaths, which, which gives a uh, case fatality 2.01. Now, this is an important slide. If you look at uh, all waves, five waves and number of deaths reported. Now, fifth wave, you can see sudden rise of cases. The highest number of, uh, or the highest number of cases per day reported in the fifth wave went up to 8,500. Compared to first wave, where the highest number was uh, reported 6,600 cases. And since then, uh, it was coming down, but fifth wave, it was very high number of cases. But looking at the deaths, you can see there's a distinct difference in fifth wave. Uh, this is one of the proxy, uh, I, I think, evidence we have that vaccines are working very well and vac Pakistan vaccination program also working very well. Uh, as recommended by WHO, focusing on initially high risk groups uh, like above 65, above 60, and then uh, focusing on comorbid patients and this, this uh, vaccine deployment plan in Pakistan has worked very well and, and then healthcare workers and other more vulnerable groups have been covered quickly. So we can see that have uh, really come down. This is one of the, the good indicator we see. And we have started the uh, uh, vaccine effectiveness study among healthcare workers and we have some data available which shows uh, vaccines are very much effective in Pakistan. Uh, number of lab tests done, there are some areas where some provinces, number of tests done is not, uh, not enough, but overall, if you look at it, it, it is uh, quite, quite reasonable. Uh, one of the reasons why if you compare case fatalities to, uh, one of the reasons uh, is number of tests done is uh, comparatively low compared with uh, some countries. So denominator is less. If you do more testing, probably you will find more mild um, uh, uh, cases. So uh, your number of cases will be high and deaths are then, uh, you know, compared to will come down. So this is one of the reasons. But uh, I would say it's amazing uh, work done in capacity building. Initially, Pakistan didn't have any testing facility, but NIH uh, under Dr. Ikram's leadership within two weeks started uh, the facility expand to uh, 106 labs across the country um, in three months. That, that's an amazing capacity building. And at the moment, 156 labs are 
functioning across the country, but more than 200 labs have capacity to do testing. And, and, and I think testing capacity is, um, is something around 100,000 a day. And during the peak in peak wave, number of tests uh, done have gone up to 65,000. And already 26 million um, tests have been, been performed. And when it comes to genomic sequencing, Pakistan is doing extremely well. Rapid antigen testing is another addition. I don't want to go into all details. Now you see test positivity has come down. That test positivity is a proxy indicator of level of transmission. So that low shows level of transmission is also low. Uh, it's not uh, uh, average, but across the provinces, you can see it's all below five. We start to monitor by a district. WHO have district surveillance officers in all hybrid districts. You see still Gilgit, Hyderabad, Musafarabad. There are a few cities. It's uh, more than 5%. But other than that, all the other places, it has come down below 5%. Uh, so that's, that shows level of transmission is low. Now, number of cases admitted is 1,249 and, and number on ventilator 144. So you are aware that number of uh, beds available with oxygen facilities more than 6,000 in the country, number of ventilators 1,500 available. So health system has been very much strengthened after the first wave or during the first wave. Since then, there was no compromisation of the health services and easily accommodate much more patients. So Patient care has not been compromised uh, during after the first wave. Healthcare workers' infections are very much less now. Um, that's again another indicator of uh, effectiveness of vaccines and good vaccine vaccination program among healthcare workers. These are the genomic uh, sequencing data. Now, Omicron is basically replaced all the other um, uh, variants. And uh, globally, it's 95% or more is Omicron. Pakistan also, all the provinces, Omicron is present. Uh, you can see all the provinces. Uh, and number of uh, sequencing done is 15,440. That's an amazing figure. They're really good. And NIH is leading this. And WHO is so happy to support. We supported to establish 32 labs with PCR machines. And then genomic sequencing, we established Doe University, a new testing facility. And we supported NIH. Uh, with free agents and um, uh, capacity building, but NIH is doing a great job there. Um, I don't want to go into all these details, but uh, if you compare the countries uh, who are supported by Gavi, Pakistan is the best uh, uh, country doing uh, uh, vaccination. But high-income countries, uh, they have so much of vaccines available and coverage is high. But I must say total doses so far received is 286 million doses out of which more than 90% is being used in Pakistan. And uh, the, the most important thing is that Pakistan started bilateral negotiation even before COVAX uh, supply uh, to get vaccines. So that's a, a really good feature. So, and Pakistan is focused on elderly population, adults and so on. So uh, gone by the uh, good vaccine deployment plan uh, and good policy. And if you look at these, some of the countries say when the vaccines coverage is high, uh, you know, even you have high number of cases, deaths are very much less. This is one of such evidence available in Saudi Arabia. And probably our study, uh, we have completed four weeks, another uh, four weeks to be completed, um, which we have undertaken to see the vaccine effectiveness study. We can present the data to you. You know, Pakistan, as I said, it's more than 40%, 43% now fully vaccinated. Now we need to focus on booster doses uh, because elderly population and then comorbid population are high risk. So we need to now uh, look at the booster dose. So far, 4 million given, but we need to really look at that to reduce deaths further. So uh, safety and effectiveness, WHO approved vaccines, what is being used in Pakistan, is all uh, are, are good and, and effective. And there are so much of uh, studies have been performed across the low high vaccination coverage among priority groups, few and deaths. I, I think that's the most important thing. So booster dose, we really need to focus on this. Uh, uh, that's, that's all. Uh, I, I have so many other things to present, but I don't want to go into all details. But let, let me say, Pakistan, if you look at uh, the 
the number of deaths compared to many other countries, if you look at for 1 million population, number of deaths are very much less. And then fifth wave, fourth wave, we have started to see number of deaths are much, much lower than uh, first two, three waves, which shows the, uh, the effectiveness of vaccination program in Pakistan. And, and then, of course, clinical management and care is also very much improved. Health system strengthening was done. And we again undertaken a study after the first wave um, in Kaiba, you know, with Kaiba University in KP to see the factors affecting high number of deaths in KP. And we have seen the delay in admission as one, and then uh, the severity of the infection. And when somebody is referred to ICU and ICU care, it's not easy to, you know, or outcome is not that good. So we need to really look at high vaccination coverage to reduce deaths. At the same time, it's good to look at, uh, as I have shown in public health measures, mask wearing, social distancing, hand hygiene. These things prevent you and uh, the, the, the infection so that uh, this will be reduced. So that's all I wanted to present to you. Uh, I'll stop here, but if there are any questions, uh, I, 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 I can uh, uh, answer. Thank you so much. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Palitha. Very complete picture of the uh, Omicron and uh, current situation of the, uh, this COVID uh, pandemic, uh, not only in Pakistan and also uh, in the uh, world. Uh, before we start question and answer session, I would request to Major General uh, Amir Ikram. Thank you very much, sir. Can you give your viewpoints about this? And a very important thing is that right. uh, yeah. you will uh, explain about the, uh, the policy that uh, you adopted uh, during this uh, COVID from the last two years. We will have, inshallah, one uh, complete session with you, sir, on the uh, quality control of this uh, PCR about the COVID. Uh, Major General Amir Ikram, Director General NIH, over to you, sir. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum and a very good morning to all of you. Thank you so uh, much, Thank sir. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, my Professor Malazim. Uh, you're doing a great job and that we understand uh, this is the time when the experience should be shared. And that truly makes the difference. Uh, uh, I, we understand uh, Corona has been a big challenge, uh, but um, my concept is that such challenges do bring in opportunities. And uh, it is our duty to convert those uh, challenges into opportunities and then opportunities into realities. And that's what has practically happened. We stood as a nation, and uh, that's the big reason. Uh, but the foremost thing is definitely the role of the partners and the donors. And I think the uh, very close association with WHO, and in particular the country office, and even the individuals make a lot of difference. So Dr. Palita has been a great help during this uh, crisis period. So our, uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, we would like to thank Dr. Palita for all the support that he has extended throughout the country. And I being uh, very close to him, to very close to the WHO country office, we have been closely watching. Uh, so I think uh, joining hands together makes a true difference. And uh, that is what is required in all the fields. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Palita, and uh, the way he has elaborated the things, practicalities, there have been so many concerns from different angles, from different people, from different institutes, uh, what are the statistics, are we doing the right way, are our statistics are right? No, they have been extremely right, because uh, once in the very initial days, uh, all the meetings uh, and other events used to be held at NIH. Uh, I think the breakthrough point, uh, the biggest achievement uh, during this period that could be achieved was uh, the establishment of National Command and Operation Center. That basically provided the PAT platform, an overarching body, bringing in the provincial government, uh, along definitely the federal government component being there, bringing in all the partners and donors, public and private sector together, and a uniform policy. I was just last week attending a WHO meeting on uh, accelerating the things and uh, the outcome was mainly having a uniform platform and a uniform policy. And that is what mattered. I would uh, just like to narrate one of the recent examples. I mean, uh, getting this uh, uh, Premier League, uh, Pakistan Premier League done uh, um, during crisis. I mean, Omicron is very much there. But Alhamdulillah, it's been a great success. Not even a single player that could 
catch or uh, not even the audience and even the cities of Karachi and Lahore. Uh, Karachi was otherwise slightly higher on the percentage. So we never uh, uh, got any rise in the number of cases. So uh, this, uh, this, this, this uh, means that uh, I think strict vigilance implementation, because I think implementation has been the area where there has been more focus. It's much easier to make the policy sitting in the rooms as a national body, but actual implementation and practicalities on ground have been immense. Just to give you an example, we started off uh, with 300 tests for PCR at NIH in a day, and we just had 100 in, uh, 1,000 in the stock. Today, Alhamdulillah, more than 200 labs all across the country are performing. And the major brunt has been taken by the public health labs that were established by um, ANIH uh, in all the provincial and regional capitals. They have performed tremendously. At the end of the day, again, the things are there, but uh, all appreciation to the team that they could make it. And uh, next time you'll be talking about the quality how we can try to maintain that. There have been issues in definitely uh, in certain labs, but uh, overall, uh, I think it's been immaculate. We never allowed the antigen uh, testing uh, till very recent uh, days uh, because uh, we wanted to mainly bank upon the PCR. Similarly, we established a center of genomics as already pointed out uh, by Dr. Pelita, uh, and it has again come up to the expectation, not only at the national level, but international level. And this Center for Genomics would be covering uh, currently COVID and uh, viruses, but moving on to microbiological. And later on, we will be having the human component uh, for genomics as well. So this is how we have evolved during this crisis. And uh, one of the main example, I think, uh, is a, a vaccine, where we've got a very robust system of um, picking up the person directly connected to the NADRA and getting the precise data. And uh, not only that, uh, we started uh, uh, first ever phase three clinical trial, as you all understand, for CanSino in Pakistan. We just wanted to make the trial successful, the outcome of vaccine, whatever it would have been. But Alhamdulillah, we conducted the trial in seven different centers. The trial was a great success. And based upon that, now we have got a great inflow of phase three clinical trials uh, in the country. And this is uh, the area where the clinical side medical side needs to put in a lot of efforts so as to join hands. And that uh, was tagged with transfer of technology. So we started co-manufacturing can sino within NIH. Alhamdulillah, we have achieved the first target that was given of 20 billion. So this is what we can do if uh, uh, there is a will, there is way, there is dedication. Uh, there is always, um, um, I think, joining hands together. And we stood as a nation. So all in all, extremely grateful to all the colleagues that are here because you have been performing in your own field. It's been very tiresome, difficult uh, time, but uh, I think we, you all stood steadfast and uh, we need to stand together. And once again, all thanks to Pelitha and Dr. Milazan. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, General Ekram. I know the, in the beginning of uh, this COVID, uh, you, uh, your personality, uh, worked uh, like an active uh, molecule for the Pakistan and you provided so many opportunities. We will have another, I have requested you. Uh, there are so many questions on the PCR and something else. Now, uh, uh, I start the question, first question from my side, Dr. Balitha. Uh, uh, one of the question from our uh, president, uh, Salman Kundi. Question was, what is the statics of uh, COVID in Pakistan and what is the statics of uh, vaccination in children in Pakistan under 10 years? Oh, okay. Th thank you so much. Uh, let, let me, one point, I, I, I forgot to really appreciate uh, the initiative of uh, GAIN, Dr. May General Ikram, this vaccine production. And Parkpack uh, so far produced 20 million doses. That's amazing. One of the countries in the region, you know, started to uh, uh, produce vaccines. So um, early stages, but still 20 million doses have been produced. And, and now there's a lot of discussion going on. WHO has announced 13 countries in the world uh, where WHO would like to support uh, to produce vaccines. And Pakistan is among that. And Pakistan is, there are two countries selected from this region, Pakistan and Egypt. And we have had discussion now um, uh, to see how best we can transfer the technology. So I think, again, NIH is uh, playing a great uh, and impressive role there. Now, coming to the status 
of uh, COVID-19. Now we, we see the, we are in the fifth wave and uh, cases are coming down rapidly, extremely rapidly. And the global experience for Omicron is that it, it, it goes up quickly and also come down quickly. And again, there's a comparison done globally. Europe took uh, four to six weeks to reach the peak, but in Eastern Mediterranean region, it's two to three weeks to reach the peak. And also when it reached quickly, it's come down quickly as well. So we, we expect that this coming down very, very uh, quickly. And one of the reason is also the, uh, the, the good coverage of vaccination. So if you look at the partial vaccination, it's, it's close to 80% of the population. And also there have been zero prevalence studies done in Pakistan, more than 40,000, 43,000 you know, uh, samples were tested for antibodies and 42.4% uh, zero prevalence in Pakistan. So having close to 80% partial vaccination, 42.4% zero prevalence uh, and 43% fully vaccinated among the total population. So th th that, that shows the mm. level here. So I, I'm sure, pretty sure that this is coming down. That does not mean that there cannot be another wave. But of course, while we are looking at this, how we are looking at this is globally now, pandemic to endemic. So you won't be able to, you know, totally eradicate this virus that will be there. But if the deaths are very much low, it will be another endemic situation. So that, that's where the global thinking is now. And Pakistan is a good uh, example where a number of cases rapidly came down and complications are much, much low. And number of deaths are very much low. And if you look at the, the graph I have shown to you, comparing all five waves, fifth wave, we have seen a distinct difference when it comes to cases and deaths. So uh, in Pakistan, this wave, fifth wave is strongly and uh, robustly coming down. Deaths are very much, very much uh, low. And now uh, vaccination under, uh, you know, 10 years. So at the moment, government policy decision is about 12 years. I'm, I'm sure now there will be a consideration uh, below 12 years to vaccinate up to five years. But I think focus should be, if you're really focused on deaths, and if you analyze the deaths among the different strata of the population, it is mainly happened among morbid people and elderly. So booster dose, if you really focus on that and cover very well, number of deaths will much, you know, much come down. So that, 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 that's, that's how I look at this. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Palitha, uh, on one side, we are saying that this Omicron is a uh, not producing a uh, hazard. On other side, we are also looking that uh, patients are coming uh, in hospitals. Uh, I give my example of this. The role of uh, booster dose. I was, I taken the booster dose myself. My son taken the booster dose. My wife taken the booster dose. But my daughter was on exam and she could not take the uh, booster dose. And from the last, she is suffering with Omicron. Thanks God that uh, uh, she is well. Uh, uh, can, what, what can we uh, think uh, about the uh, patients uh, who are dying? I will also request this from uh, Dr. Bilkis. Dr. Bilkis is the head of the Department uh, of Medicine. And she was the focal person of, the, of uh, COVID uh, during the, from the last one year. Dr. Uh, uh, Bilke, Professor Bilkis from uh, King Edward Medical University, Mayo Hospital. If you are there, can you explain why the people are still dying? Is there something else along with this Omicron? Or it is the Omicron uh, who is uh, putting them uh, uh, onto the death. So thank you for including me in this uh, wonderful discussion. And we are very really grateful to uh, Dr. Palitha uh, for throwing light on something very important as far as statistics of uh, COVID Omicron are concerned. I'll share with you my experience. I'm working as chairperson, Department of Medicine, and in charge of COVID services and in charge of telemedicine services at King Edward Medical University. Now, King Edward Medical University is affiliated out of the seven hospitals one of them is Mayo Hospital, which is the biggest center 
which has been uh, uh, arranged by the government of Punjab and Pakistan to serve for the COVID patients. So as far as experience of Omicron is concerned, uh, we had more than 100 patients at a time. So it was 118 to be exact during the last four weeks. Uh, and the patients we nowadays admit are those patients who require oxygen monitor, which are severe in, um, um, uh, in their uh, uh, clinical picture, requiring oxygen support, requiring uh, close monitoring, HTU and ICU patients. Um, the statistics as far as we collected, and we did uh, collect uh, data for research and publication during this way. The data which we have collected, I'll give you an approximate, about 95% of the patients whom we were admitting in the ICUs and the HTUs were either absolutely unvaccinated or partially okay. vaccinated. Oh, oh, great defense. Oh, great defense. This, this was something very um, uh, significant. Then another uh, thing we observed was that majority of the patients who expired or um, develop, developed long uh, uh, morbidity and long disease of severe and eventually did not recover were the ones who were unvaccinated or partially vaccinated. Uh, during the last one week, we have been receiving patients who have been vaccinated, but not received the booster dose. So what oh. we observed was either the absence of a booster dose or uh, other comorbidities. And the uh, most uh, remarkable um, observation was old age and old presence age. of an underlying previous post halt syndrome, previous exposure to COVID. And one very interesting uh, observation, Professor Malazim, was that uh, we found that there, there, there seems to be some genetic tendency. And I'd like uh, Dr. Palitha to share his um, observation regarding this, because there are families which tend to go into severe disease. And then there are families in which they're, even the unboostered uh, or the elderly don't develop either severe disease or recover completely. Very so is there point. any genetic tendency? So uh, this is something we observed that there would be families who would be you know, on the ICU beds and some of them unfortunately not recovering. Uh, so this was the general observation and uh, the experience we came across. Uh, and yes, we are uh, observing a downfall, tre downfall trend, and hopefully this is the end of the pandemic in form of Omicron and less severe viruses. Uh, Dr. Thank Parita, you, there is another question uh, to you. Uh, can you think that uh, now we are ending the pandemic? Well, uh, uh, that's definitely a very interesting uh, wish. Definitely, it's a great wish. We would still... Uh, the first wave that we got was uh, D614G, the wild variant. And uh, uh, we thought that the story may, uh, maybe might be over after that. But uh, one after the other, the four different strains, and now Omicron, and the Omicron sublineage, now BA2 spreading. Uh, but it is really curtailed. The good thing is... Uh, Omicron seems to be, uh, as already pointed out, I think Professor Bilkis, uh, that uh, Omicron may may act as a natural vaccine, and uh, because uh, it has a very fast tendency to spread, and uh, number two, uh, the um, uh, severity of the disease is less. If you compare the two lineages, BA1 and BA2, BA2 is slightly severe, but still we have yet yet not come across. As far as uh, different uh, features are concerned. Uh, I, I myself, I, I had a grant and um, uh, we, I'm working with the University of California and we are getting some very amazing results. Some of them even co coming down to the dietary patterns in Pakistan uh, are helping. It's uh, uh, not no, uh, the, the genetic propensity, maybe there, but uh, coming down to different things. And one of the things that comes is uh, the desi ghee even. Uh, that makes I mean, uh, 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 the cases which are taking uh, um, uh, are, are more, less prone uh, to getting the severe disease as compared to those taking the oils and uh, because it is it is the molecule that are degraded. We are coming to certain conclusion on that, on lineoliates and all that. Let's see what the final outcome is. But uh, I think it's the immunity with, with, and so many other things. 
and uh, this study has been really amazing and uh, uh, we we have got the first patent now which is being registered uh, for this study in uh, us and uh, let's see once we are near publishing and we'll get back to you uh, with so many factors that can play the role uh, in different regions of the world thank you uh, same question one question dr kausar from you uh, she is asking should pregnant women who have had two doses of the vaccine can get the booster and if yes then which vaccine uh, it, and which trimester oh, same question, sir. can you explain uh, uh, dr medjana uh, amir right uh, no, uh, see i mean uh, right now okay. recent studies have been concluded the, uh, um, the, um, uh, the the things have gone in a very phase wise manner earlier was 18 and plus and then at that time uh, considering the, the propensity of the virus for as2 inhibitor uh, receptors uh, initially 18 and plus were given and then uh, from uh, 12 onward 12 to 18 the studies were conducted then moving on to the next phase the 5 onwards Uh, and uh, now uh, uh, pakistan uh, we, we we are giving pfizer uh, for 12 onwards and uh, we are working with for modalities for the chinese vaccine because there are so many uh, parents which are concerned now all these vaccine uh, are have uh, undergone are undergoing trial uh, in pregnant ladies uh, one of the studies that is coming up it the results would be published very soon uh, which says that it can be safely given during pregnancy there are already um, uh, a few and uh, in certain countries they've already started off in any case uh, you are truly right uh, considering the booster and none of the studies is conducted the booster study uh, till yet and uh, the safety has been established during the trimesters uh, so we need to wait a little bit until the time if you if if, if a lady gets uh, uh, earlier and six months have passed and you would like to go for the booster uh, uh, my my word of caution we the world still needs to wait and watch for so many things uh, as far as regards to vaccine uh, please can i just share one 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 slide yes uh, yes on, dr palita uh, yes i i was yes, dr palita yes now uh, uh, th th this is just to uh, take up the point uh, what is being highlighted by our professor from king edward uh, Uh, medical college uh, this uh, set of data we collected uh, oh, number of cases and so this yes. is very clearly highlighted among the people who have been vaccinated number of deaths are extremely low even partially vaccinated number of deaths are very much low and most of the deaths are among unvaccinated people so um, I, i i would like to this set of data we collected uh from uh, different parts of the country so it is quite uh, uh, you know important uh, uh, probably uh, data we have that if you are vaccinated chances of dying is very even partial vaccination is very much very much low so just i wanted to highlight this uh, this point and uh, you know, just one point about the pregnancy and vaccination so far Uh, i think uh, the evidence is uh, quite there uh, where you, you use uh, pfizer vaccine for for uh, the pregnancy especially booster dose but but more more uh, data will be available as uh, as professor amira from uh, said uh, then another one point on uh, omicron is omicron does usually affect upper upper respiratory tract so uh, uh, pneumonia and uh, you know uh, Uh, requirement of oxygen is is quite low so that that's why uh, though we expected so much of patients coming uh, to the hospital the numbers were not that much comparatively uh, because uh, it's is mild mild form and oxygen is not that much required compared uh, to delta variant so that's all thank you so much uh, thank you so much sir uh, uh, the question thank one you. question was with you uh, dr palita what you are looking about the pandemic I, I couldn't get it. Uh, what really? What is your question exactly? No, no. The, the pandemic is now. This is the over, or it will still continue with any new coming, any BA two or something other uh, variant of concern? Uh, wonderful. I, I think this is ten million dollar question. If if somebody has an answer, um, he will get millions of dollars. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's um, as explained, it's very unpredictable. You 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 can't. But you know, it's pretty sure now. Uh, it is most of the countries yes. starting relaxation. So 
few points you need to highlight. You, are, you can't eradicate these viruses if they are. But it is now we see is transforming from pandemic to endemic. Vaccine coverage has to be high. That's number one. And then the public health measures. So we have to be cautious in relaxation. We really need to have a uh, surveillance system in place. So we need to focus on disease surveillance. We need to focus on SARI and ILI surveillance. We need to identify the number of cases going up. So vaccination is one area. We need to really reach a high percentage of coverage and then public health measures. So it's a matter of you know how you respond. Uh, but uh, basically, we, we, we think that by the end of this year, uh, probably pandemic as it is will be most probably um, over or will be very much less, but it will be an endemic situation, but countries have to be cautious about the preventive measures. Over. Uh, thank you very much. If uh, uh, there is no question, uh, I will request Professor Sarma Kondi. Uh, Dr. Kadi sir, can you uh, give the word of thanks to everyone? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Malazim. Uh, uh, we are really thankful uh, to Dr. Palita and uh, uh, Major General uh, Amarik Ram for their excellent, uh, you know, coverage of this uh, very important topic. Uh, thank you, Dr. Palita, for not only updating us uh, the situation. Dr. Palita, in uh, Prime Minister uh, Azad Jammu Kashmir, special uh, consultant of the health. Dr. Uh, Asma Andrabi is with us. Thank you, Dr. Asma Andrabi. I hope you will convey this, uh, our webinars uh, output to the Prime Minister of Azad Jammu Kashmir, who was with you during the celebration of the, uh, this mosque. Uh, G, continue, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Palita, for updating us, not only uh, the situation in Pakistan, but the uh, region, uh, throughout uh, uh, surrounding us. And uh, uh, we are really thankful to Professor Major General uh, Amir Ikram uh, for he is also efforts. Sir, he is, we have requested him to give about the, something about the PCR next time, sir. Okay, yes, we will uh, we'll definitely so many questions to have him the as PCR the speaker part. as a full-time uh, you know, presentation by him. And we are really yes. thankful yes, to sir. him. And thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Bilkis, Professor Bilkis, for sharing her experience at the uh, King Edward Medical College. And thank you all the participants who were there uh, uh, for this uh, very important uh, topic uh, that has been discussed today. And uh, on behalf of uh, Professor Salma Kundi, President PMS Center, I, Dr. Tazi Wasif, would like to thank everybody uh, uh, Dr. Qasir Sajjad is the Secretary General of Pakistan Medical Association. So in the end, thank you everybody. Dr. Uh, Dr. Palitha, my students from Zad Kashmir are watching things on the TV and they are very thankful to you for coming, especially in the Muzaffarabad. And you are support uh, not only the uh, Muzaffarabad and all over the Pakistan as the Major General uh, Ikram has also thanked to you. And Pakistan is always uh, very thankful with the help of NCOC and the well, with the help of wisdom of our government and the, with the help of our uh, institutions that we are, we shake hand to hand and Pakistan was able to uh, not only control the transmission, also, Alhamdulillah, Pakistan was able to control the severity and the Pakistan was also able uh, to handle this situation, Alhamdulillah. Uh, we know that Pakistani is the nation when they stand up uh, with any cause, or they unite to any cause, always the uh, Allah is uh, behind this nation. And at the end, I will say, Pakistan, Zindabad, Pakistan, Aindabad. Thank you so much, Majana. Let's uh, we will see you next week, inshallah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. And this is the mask you introduced. Uh, this was the biggest uh, uh, celebration in Azad Jammu Kashmir. Uh, you personally came. And the Prime Minister of uh, Azad Jammu Kashmir also participated in this work. Thank you very much, everyone.